the designs free does are amazing like just um the way the buildings are done it's not your cookie cutter average building that you have peter picked uh one of the best corners i would say again in downtown yeah. you know how did that go about first picking it and then let's talk about the team that Absolutely. she collaborated with this is a celebration of toronto this is a passion project for all involved and when we were engaging architects we basically sit there and said if you could pick anywhere in canada to build we and some of these guys didn't know canada from anywhere okay some grew up some knew it they all pointed to the same spot because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at our map look where all our infrastructure all our density yeah planes trains automobiles entertainment financial district michelin starred restaurants it's all right there so they all want to build there Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of nk real talks we got graham scully here today the VP of Sales for New Development at PSR. And we got an exciting project, which I'm personally super stoked for, and it's called Freed Hotel and Residences. Yes, Graham, sir. thanks for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And what's happening with this? This is uh, it's it's exciting. A, this is exciting. Uh, it's exciting because we're really bringing some world-class architecture to what you know we all know is a world-class city. Uh, just a lot of the people here, uh, you know, it's... We're used to our 32-story building, eight-story podium, and, and that works, but we're a world-class city, and it's nice to bring some world-class architecture to it. And you guys got some big names working on the project. We do. We do. It's, it's, uh, it, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's, uh, when, when we talked and we started to um, um, look into architects for this site, the site's at Adelaide and Duncan, uh, 240 Adelaide, right on the corner, uh, northeast corner of Adelaide and Duncan. Um, for those of you who know Toronto, it was the old Crocodile Rock, <laughs> where uh, $2 beers were forever. Inflation never kicked in there. But uh, great site. And with a site like that, we really wanted to uh, bring the A game um, because this is a site that will be seen um, across the city from all vantage points. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about first, let's get to it from the beginning. When did Freed actually think about doing a project like this? When did they acquire it? And how did it go from selecting the team? So I'll tell you, this started, I've been I've been lucky enough to be selling Peter's product for almost 16 years now. Yeah. Uh, I say I was lucky because when I started in real estate, um, it was product was the product that was easy to sell. It was appealed to my clients. It was sexy. It had a difference to it. It stood out. I always called it the freed factor. Uh, it was pretty easy that when, you know, came to resale and you were trading a little bit more or a lot more for a place that was, you know, across the street, it made a lot of sense. So it helped build my clientele. And what I fell in love with was that energy that those buildings had. So it really started in King West. Um, Peter and I did a project together called the Thompson Hotel. It's now the one hotel yeah. at King and Bathurst. And it was just there that that building took on a feel and a life of its own and had an energy. Um, I still have my unit that that's there. And it's just that that's where we had this lifeblood, this energy that we didn't get from regular buildings. Yep. We had people talking about it. It just became this place in King West that everyone wanted to be. And we saw that, you know, our city was ready for this type of uh, international uh, brands. Well, while we're talking about um, Thompson Hotel, I remember when it got launched, the prices were kind of like you know, on the higher end of the spectrum. They thought we were crazy. Yeah, and uh, it sold very well. Yeah. And whoever bought, I think within like three or five years after, everyone was super stoked about how the appreciation was. I have a few clients there that they still haven't sold their units and they will probably never sell. No, it's you always say those that's a hold. It's yeah. some of those buildings you feel you advise your clients to sell an assignment, you assign you know, you advise to to rent, but this was one of those holds that, that yeah. I've always been glad that uh that I held on to. But yeah, it was it was a special place, you yeah. know. And that was that was at the time too. I mean, we did 75 Portland at the time. Yeah. And that was really, another great uh, yeah, building. Like that's an iconic building. Yeah. That was uh, if you remember we did Fleep Stark did the uh, in interiors and that was the AK47 lamp. Yeah. Like it just attracted the right people. And like when you say like it was everyone thought we were crazy at the price. And when you look back at these crazy prices, 60 Colburn was another yeah. one. We broke yeah. $600 a square foot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. 14 years ago. And it's always about 25% more than the regular stuff. But they're still even selling very well. They, they, that they held their value. And like 75 Portland, first of all, you can't find a proper unit in there. And when you do, they're selling for crazy prices. I know. I know. And and it, it's, it really is. When you, you like I said, for a 25% premium over all this other product, 
That became a product people held on to. They respected it. it. Got great t clients. The area around it only kept getting better and better. I yeah. mean, King West had a second kind of resurgence with amazing restaurants yeah. and, and, you know, got rid of the nightlife. And it, it just grew and matured. So that premium, I always say, like, that premium is the one that I'm always happy of paying that. Everything in my life that I valued, it's had a little premium and it's been rare. And those are those type of buildings that I look back and, and I've done over, you know, almost 6 billion in pre-construction sales wow. uh, in 16 years. And those are the, you know, there's some of those projects that really stand out. Those are two of them. And those are the buildings you want to invest in because yeah, you are paying a premium, but you're not going to get a lot of, in my opinion, investors that are going to flip as soon as the project is done. Cause usually you get a lot of people signing pro units right before closing or on the closing it comes, you know, you get a That's surge right. of supply coming in a that flood. the prices, yeah, yeah. Prices will drop and everyone will panic. But none of these projects were at that point that, you know, once the closing happened, you would see like, you know, 31 bedrooms come on the market. I no. never saw it. Assignments would go go very quick because people yeah. wanted it in there. You didn't have this. You didn't have... And they were making crazy money on assignments because the building was sold out. That's right. That's yeah. right. And it was just this, like, it, it had a special kind of, like, you shouldn't say quoi, right? It yeah. had a feeling to yeah. it. And part of that, like, I still live in King West with my family. Yeah. Like, there's... There's just, there's a vibe to it. And, and we always, we were always very uh, like happy about what we created there. And really that spawned a lot of, uh, like I said, that was before there was collaborations, like developers doing their thing. Let's say like a lot of value engineering design was in there, but there wasn't design arts, this type of where the lifeblood of your building, where the people in it and the way it intermingled with your city. So after Peter did what in King West, because you know, King West was a town that you could shoot a cannon through at night and hit nothing but abandoned factories. And so now it's, you know, Range Rovers and, and some of the highest real estate prices in the city. So once we had kind of, you know, done King West um, and, and, and even the the hospitality side of it and a lot of restaurants yeah. and a lot of great things there went up to midtown where uh, i was lucky enough to do 150 and 155 red path with peter and then this really special project which was uh, art shop, shop. Yeah. and i remember doing those condos and people said prices are crazy and what does carl lagerfeld have to do with a condo and listen like everyone was wrong it it yeah. was it was before people were lining up for projects and they lined yeah. up for that project i mean yeah. the head of chanel being part of your building yeah. all of a sudden everyone realized like we're a world class city and we want world class things and the designs free does are amazing like yeah. just um, the way the buildings are done it's not your cookie cutter average building that you have so that leads us to this project so peter picked uh, one of the best corners i would say again in downtown yeah. and um uh, you know, how did that go about first picking it and then the team, let's talk about the team that Absolutely. she collaborated with. So let's, first of all, this is, this is a celebration of Toronto. This is a passion project for all involved. And we've always felt that as a world-class city, the people in it, their lives are elevated by these type of beautiful projects, by arts and entertainment and culture. And when we were engaging architects, we basically sit there and said, if you could pick anywhere in Canada to build, we, and some of these guys didn't know Canada from anywhere okay some grew up some knew it they all pointed to the same spot because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at our map look where all our infrastructure all our density yeah planes trains automobiles entertainment financial district michelin starred restaurants it's all right there so they all want to build there also that's where we're density friendly so the city wants us to build there because they've spent more dollars per square inch on infrastructure so they want us to tap into it if you look at our city we're missing a big part that new york has it's i call it the missing manhattan Okay, there's not these downtown ultra luxury buildings that are skyscrapers that have world class architecture that define skylines in our city. Our skyline, if you are looking at the picture that I brought up right here, there are yeah. two buildings that look vastly different than all those other buildings. Yeah. And that's because on that strip of Duncan and Adelaide, you're on Hotel Row or Hotel Alley. You have the Shangri-La, you have the Ritz, you have all these beautiful buildings. And then you have this density rich area where if you want to engage world-class architects, you need to build more than 32 stories. Yeah. The budgets just don't, don't fit it. If you want to have design changes that push the envelope of what architecture is, you want to have buildings that when they come up in your view, increase your view. Yeah. You know what happens when King Toronto comes up in my view in King West? My price goes up. Yeah. When Frank Gehry's building comes up in my view, it goes up. When a regular building comes up and it blocks my view, it goes down. Yeah. That says it all. We yeah. want these buildings coming up in our skyline. That's such a nice way to approach it because that's what I always say. Listen, it doesn't matter that if you're looking into another building, but if it's a nice building, listen, like it adds to the experience. That's right. And this is what you have here. So how many stories do we have here? 
So the building is uh, it's 63 stories, but with a really special top to it. It's actually about 70 stories, which I'll, I'll show you here. Um, but it's really, it, it's a unique building in the sense that this location is very central. And if you look around, it almost acts, when the architect looked at this, he wanted it to be like a sundial. All right, so much like that CIBC building, we yeah. check it all the time, it reflects differently. This will be right in the center of our city. It looks different every hour of the day by how the sun reflects, the lighting package. It's absolutely beautiful, but the best thing about it was uh, the architects are Gordon Gill, Smith and Gill, um, from uh, world-renowned architects out of Chicago. So Gordon Gill, he grew up uh, in uh, South Africa. He was, uh, he has his architectural firm in Chicago, like all greats do, but he, had his childhood and his real uh, life in the city. Correct. So when he talked about building this building, he was so excited to give a building that contributed back to his city. And that was what solidified it for us to have this world-class architect want to contribute to our city, not put something up that's flashy and just for him and to cause a statement. Like this was to hold your attention and be something that gives back to the city of Toronto. So when we engaged um, Gordon Gill, that really set things off. Um, we were able to then go out and start to attract some very, very interesting people. And I always say like, Peter is a very char charismatic guy. I've worked with him for 15 years. From the likes of Karl Lagerfeld, Philippe yeah. Stark, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and, you know, our big surprise yeah. that we had coming out, you know, with Takashi Murakami. But he's a very charismatic guy. He makes great partnerships. So when we had this architect, this world-class architect, there was a lot of people that wanted to work with us. So when we wanted to bring, like, these structures are... Are, are unbelievable and when our clients look at this and they say it's it's a little i mean that's daunting those almost look like yeah. renderings like yeah. there's no buildings in the city of toronto that look like that when i talk to clients i'd say the two buildings that resonate most with them is that uh gordon gill and uh, adrian smith were responsible for the burj khalifa yeah i mean tom cruise did jump off that and made it very accessible to a lot of people but it is the tallest building in the world an architectural gem and then you have central park tower which That's is a gem of a building right so like, yeah. when we're trying to say like the dna of the building and the people putting it together world class yeah burj khalifa yeah. you know central park tower in new york dubai it, it's yeah. incredible so when we when we had this amazing building we said okay we need that warmth of the interior right right because it's a five-star hotel it needs to be inviting these superstructures can't be just cold and glass so we engaged uh, anwar from design agency Again, another individual that has offices all over the world, designed major hotels, but the you guys might know Soho House. Yeah. You're, you're a cool guy. I'm yeah. sure you've been down there before. Broadview Hotel uh, on the uh, east side. They're from Toronto. Yeah. I, I just saw Anwar last week. Like These are guys that know and love our city and are passionate about it. Uh, when you have that type of collaboration, they're very easy to work with. And I'll say, this was a celebration of Toronto on an international level. It's yeah. a five-star hotel with a boutique residence attached to it. So we wanted to have that energy running through our building. And that was, we were lucky enough when we narrowed down our, our list of wishes of who we could work with. I know mine was Takashi Murakami. I mean, the colors, just what you can work with there. There's no artist that, that I know that puts an instant smile on my wife's, my son's, uh, and my face instantly. Yeah. So having something like that in a lobby, having that give back to the city where you're going to walk by and you're going to have that pic pictures being taken yeah. with it, interaction, I, and the fact that Murakami has only ever really collaborated with the best. I mean, Louis Vuitton. Well, that's the whole thing. So when you guys, uh, when we talked first, you said, okay, there's going to be a surprise element to this project and when you guys revealed who they're collaborating with i was like oh my god i've seen his work uh louis vuitton was one of them. i've seen a bunch of other uh designers that collaborated with him and i was like holy crap how did you find this guy it, which is so spot on for what you guys are doing there it's it, it's spot on and you know what the the best thing about it and, and you got to meet him i mean it yeah, was his first was time amazing. ever coming down to toronto um uh, i'll say these guys they're not obligated to to do much and they stayed all night yeah, very cool guy. Posted about it, written us. And when I when I think of an international talent like that, I, I get very excited when Gordon Gill goes back to Chicago and Togashi goes back to Japan and they have these feelings of Toronto yeah. on an international level. Like that really means a lot to me. Yeah. And and building things like this that, you know, add to the city, it's 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 amazing. It, it really it's what it's all about. So let's so, talk about the collaboration. So uh, what exactly 
you know yeah and expect I'll, I'll tell you it's you're gonna you're gonna expect uh to have uh it's called parent flower and child in the lobby so that's that gonna be it. sitting there when you come home from uh from work with your uh with your loved ones and then walking by that and really the collaborations created these areas and these moments within the building and uh, one of the first architects i worked with was uh italian and he said to me he's like i don't understand people in toronto they spend two dollars on their handle for their door the cheapest thing he said in italy we spend thousands of dollars because it's the first thing you touch it sets the tone for the rest of the experience so we wanted to create a very nice door handle and i think when you have a lobby like this and, and the reason why you can have a lobby like this you know a lobby like this in a regular building maintenance fees couldn't cover it you can't do it it'd be way too much i can't design things like that but when you have a five-star hotel i don't have to have a pizza pizza convenience store i can have 20-foot ceilings international art and this yeah. lighting lobby that is really on a world-class level, right? And, and it was funny, because we learned when we were, we did the Thompson Hotel and yeah. the Hotel, built this entire separate private entrance for all the people who bought in there. No one uses it. Yeah. Not a single person walks through the private entrance, because in the lobby, there's artists and athletes and That's musicians. That's so true. And drinks being served, yeah. and beauty, like it's 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 When incredible. you even look at the other uh, condos, no one goes through the uh, private right. you know, uh, goes through the. Uh, this is where, you know, you're going to have, that's a perk of living in a five-star hotel. And then yeah. you have your own desk. So when it's lined up, you walk yeah. to your VIP <laughs> desk and you get your, your 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 beautiful concierge. So I really think, like, there's an energy. I've been doing this for a long time. And most lobbies, I can say marble work looks nice, but there's not a feel. I don't necessarily want to spend a lot of yeah. time in the lobby. Yeah. Um, the building itself, like you said, we're right on Hotel Alley. So the nice thing about this is you're in amongst the best in the city. Um, and selfishly, when when we come to market, uh, when we're done building and constructing in 2030, we'll be the new hotel residents. That's okay. what I was waiting for. So let's go back right now. The newest hotel and resident we have is coming right now to occupancy. So this is going into occupancy in what year? 2030. 2029, 2030. Yeah. So let's just say 30 will be all done. 30 will be all done. Yeah. So that's six years from now. So the newest hotel is going to be six years. Yeah, and most old. are 25 years. The other so ones are going to be it. well over 20, which it. is insane to think about it because I know a few of them. I don't want to say the names. But yeah. they, to me, they were just lunch. But one of them, one of the last ones, close by on Blue Jays, beautiful. 2015. Yeah. And right now, to like next I year know. is going to be 10 years. I know. It's insane. And you know, hotel residents people, they like sexy. They like yeah. new. They like, yeah. you know what I mean? So this is going to be, and because of Peter's involvement in Toronto and his love for the city, for Gordon Gills, for uh, a design agency, we want this to be, you know, if you're traveling to Toronto, you're going to yeah. stay at Toronto's five-star hotel. That's what it's going to be. Yeah. That's what the... Because like Shangri-La at that point is going to be what? Yeah, probably. And our residents inside it, it said the suites and the sizes we have, which I'll get into, that's what's been unique. That's what we're getting the most calls about. Right. Hotel residents, people, you know, we have the all suite sizes, but they want that selection of, yeah. of, of larger suites. So let's, yeah, so let's talk about uh, what they can expect in terms of um, first, I want to go, should we talk about, okay, you got the lobby, you got the amenities. Can we talk about where the lobby, you know, yeah, what so they expect in the lobby and then where the amenities and then all the way to the, because I know there's a there great is. element all the way on top. There is a lot of give backs, and I think yeah. that was the, that was the theme of this building. So, say you're in a five star hotel, so there are, there are a lot of perks. I mean, you don't have to go up to the Four Seasons to have a great spa experience. You can go yeah. down to the fifth floor. Yeah, you don't have to go. You know, you can get towel service. You can yeah. like. You, there's a, there's a, a lot of perks, but really, when when Peter and I were discussing these projects and where it all came from, is when you're on vacation, you pick a hotel, and I'm sure you're the same as me. We work very hard. Yeah. So when I go on vacation, I want to have exciting restaurants in my hotel. I want to have architecture that's beautiful. I want to walk in and be excited to check in and see what's yeah. around every corner. And if you can even give a touch of that to your everyday life coming home from work. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I think we've hit something. So when I say the perks of hotel living, you get a huge lobby that doesn't kill your maintenance fees. You get to have a spa. You get to have world-class amenities. And because you have a boutique hotel in it, your maintenance fees aren't $2 a square foot at one. When I launch, you'll be very excited about the maintenance fees. You know the range is 69 to 89 cents for maintenance fees. There's no yeah. way you should be getting all this in there. We're able to to do that. It is it's it's going to be great. It'll be one of the the perks of living in this is that you'll have a great maintenance fee and access. And with only a hundred unit boutique hotel, the amenities aren't going to be used up by you know everything yeah. in the building, right? But I really think the perks of hotel living are the uh, uh, hospitality spaces within it. Yeah. So I'll say one of the big announcements that we had was we struck a deal with Katsuya, which is Sam Nazarian's group, SBE group. Yeah. I'm sure you know, like came out Beautiful. the articles, Nobu better watch out. Yeah. You know, so really this was a testament to how much people want to work with Toronto and be in Toronto. They have flagships in Los Angeles, Miami, Dubai, you know, yeah. Bahamas. 
10,000 square feet on our second and floor. And just for people who don't know, like Sam, and he does SLS Hotel. Yeah. And, um, you know, those are amazing uh, places. And Katsu is usually in, in all of them. That's right. So yeah. it's, it's an international brand. And really, what, what made me feel so good is so many people wanted to be in Toronto. They want to get their foothold. Yeah. Okay? We're an international city that just kind of took the shackles off. And we're starting to really blossom and, and, and pump our chests out. And these guys, they want, we're beautiful people, healthy financially sound we have you know, a great social system all of those things around the world that are envious of we just haven't been building commercial spaces that they want to put yeah. their you know multi-million dollar restaurants in yeah luckily just say now we are so the one that that i'm um, also is the penthouse here so i just want to take a second like if you're looking at this it's 62nd and 63rd floor there's going to be a world-class uh, um, sky bar and restaurant now this would normally be a penthouse Okay, they, that I'd sell for sixty million dollars, and one person would see it a couple of days out of the year when they flew in. This view, this area is an experience that should be felt by Toronto. You can imagine going into a restaurant that has seven stories of glass, seventy yeah. feet of glass above you, overlooking your city with the CN Tower. It looks like it's a stone's throw away. That's what I mean. Like you can have an iconic location, iconic building, bring everything together. But when you have those experiences yeah. and the people in your city imprint those with your building, yeah. that's when they want to live there. That's when they go, when I grow up, that's where I want to be. And to build buildings that, that feel like that, it's because they have these give backs where the city yeah. gets to enjoy it as well. That's that's amazing. I'm just looking at it. We don't have anything like that right now in Toronto unless you go on top of CN Tower, <laughs> which <laughs> the quality of food is not going to be the same. But and it, this is amazing. Yeah. And, um, I like... This is exactly what we're talking about, like something different for so And these are the things that will add value to the resale as well, because there's no other building sure. we can compare this to. Every other hotel that I know, well, I mean, except Thompson Hotel, of course, that you get a rooftop experience. Majority of them, all the restaurants are in the bottom, right? right. Like, you know, you see Ritz Carlton, everything is in the bottom. Most expensive real estate's up there. Yeah. So, you know, but that's... That's unique. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think that when you're in this market and you're bringing something like we've had so much interest in this because it is unique. Yeah. It's not the next thing that we're just calling, you know, a different street name. It's, yeah. It's we're changing the skyline. So it is it's it's a it's a luxury building. OK, yeah. like there's there's no doubt about it. And it's 63 stories. But the most luxurious thing about it, besides the spas, besides the pools, you name it, is the fact there's only 400 units. Yeah. I love luxury. I just don't want to share it with 900 people. Yeah. Right. So I, I think there's, you know, this is certainly a building to have, you know, a building of this size with only 400 units in it and a five area and a, and a hundred unit five star hotel, with that type of commercial space. Yeah. Like that's a lot of value to the for one of 400 people that get to live in there. Right. It's so, and then even from our sight lines, our residential starts on the 14th floor. You're going to have views of the CN Tower from there because of our location. And we right. get over top of that Reuters building in front of us. But, it, I guess I say this rendering, this is like yeah. at dusk. Yeah. It changes it's colors. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So the way the building shakes up is you're going to have your, um, you know, world-class lobby, your hotel, free hotel and residences will go up to the uh, 14th floor. 14 to 39 will be residential floors. Let's call it like the first yeah. tier. So we'll have some, um, you know, good size units there, smaller units, your pied de and whatnot, yeah. your tier two. You're going to your like 800 to about 1100 square foot units, things yep. like that. And then the one that, that I've been, you know, that's the one that I'll be honest, most people are interested in because there's a demand and a lack of that product downtown is the penthouse collection. We'll have 10 floors of true penthouses ranging from 2000 to 6,000 square feet. And how many uh, units per floor? Only one to three. Wow. So th this is like... And did I see correct? There was like four bedroom in there? It, it, is that there the is. bed house? Yeah, yeah. There's like, listen, we didn't design... You think at 2,000 yeah. 6,000 square feet, it's 12 bedroom compared to most companies. Yeah. You get a 900 square foot, th you know, three yeah. bedroom plus den, it's, right? Yeah. Or if you're trying to take your good clients and get them a penthouse, it's usually, you know, an 850 square foot, two bedroom, connecting yeah, you, two, you know, one plus dens and making it a Frankenstein penthouse. Yeah. Like you want true design, you want selection. You're going to have 10 floors to select from. You can customize one Whatever. to three units per floor. Mm -hmm. It's Amazing. I have a rendering as well. Oh. This would be a regular unit, let's say tier one and two. And I say regular, like engineered hardwood floors, everything integrated and paneled, everything melee, uh, slab. And these counter, are all slab, standard? Slab, standard. Everything I was showing you is standard, floor to ceiling windows. And this is where, when I was saying, like pushing the boundaries of, of, of uh, architecture and then what we're doing in the city. It, I geeked out on this, but when Gordon explained his window systems with me, it was about four hours. And I'll say, like, I'm 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 excited by it. I've never seen them before. Uh, 
typically when you see these beautiful commercial buildings and they're able to have diamonds in it and all this, it's because they don't have to have operable windows, Yeah. right? So you usually have this big open pane of glass here with this usually emollient right here yeah. and a crank. Yeah. You get to push open to get about that much air. Not very sexy and it breaks yeah. up your lines. It breaks up the views from outside. It's architects hate it. So he designed this fin that lays within a mullion in the window seat. Wow. And that's your operable window. So it opens like oh, that. Wow. So it's not seen from the inside or outside. So it, for the architect, he said, it's like buying an off the rock or a tailored suit. There's nothing hanging off this. It's a that's... completely tailored building. So I think that's, that's beautiful. I have a penthouse in King West. I hate my windows now. <laughs> This would be an uh, example of the penthouse. I mean, the CN Tower is right there. Um, you're going to have the top 10 floors, one to three suites per floor, minimum double exposure per unit or triple exposures yep. for some, nine and 10 foot ceilings, uh, marble, everything. It's not just 30 inch appliances, it's 36, nice. walk in wine. Like the people that are attracted to this, it's, well, it's yeah, on, you're a, getting all on of a it. different level. You're getting yeah. all of it. That's amazing. So that would be about a view from about the 50th floor. That'd be about wow. a 2,000 square foot corner unit. Just looking at that island, that's... Uh, I know, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Our designers worked a lot with color and play and clean lines. Just a random question, any gas cooktops? Um, or they're just no, induction? Be all, it's very difficult yeah. in these big buildings to do gas. So you, yeah. do, the, uh, you, know, you do the alternatives, but... Uh, like but that's said, amazing, like the, the, the way this whole design works out. Mm -hmm. And again, the fact that you said, like, you know, when you're getting a basic unit, like, it's coming fully loaded. You don't have to be like, okay, I'm spending this much now. I got to spend another, you know, yeah, X amount on upgrading that's it. That's right. Yeah. Or even to the fact that, that, you know, you're in this lesser suite. It's just lesser square footage. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it, it really is. It's beautiful. All the architectural details of everything else. It's Amazing. just, uh, and yeah, the window systems are beautiful. It's, it's really nice. So, you know, I, with this building, because of the way we set it up, and like I said, it's a shared agreement with the hotel, so you get to benefit from a 24-hour concierge, a world-class lobby, infinity pool. And when I say like infinity pool... Yeah, you, where is that? So it's on the fifth floor. Wow. You're going to have a beautiful outdoor pool, building spa, clo uh, steam showers, cold plunge, you name it, okay? But the whole point is, is you're going to get this for a good maintenance fee that you couldn't get in any other building, okay? right? And I also say that... When your regular building gets taken over, your condo board looks at it, you don't have the eyes of a five-star hotel keeping everything clean, keeping the right. elevators pristine, keeping yeah. the lobby pristine. Like, I go downstairs to my unit, and someone's let their dog pee on the ground. You yeah. better be believed. There'll be a lot of people making sure that doesn't yeah. happen. So I believe that part of that adds to that experience because yeah. I want my place taken care of, right? So uh, you're going out to the pool. This, wow. is, this is what sets it to me. In a regular building, you bring your towel. You bring your plastic cup, your food, and your thing. You shop yeah. it all downstairs. I want to go to a pool where I have a server serving me drinks, bringing me towels. Like, you're in a five-star hotel, so yeah. you get to do that. Like, that's a different experience. See, that's experience. an experience. That's an experience, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and this here, too, that's a, um, the back end of the spa. But these are the wow. mullions on the outside where you're having the uh, window fins hit. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a whole different look. It opens building. into those. Yeah, like, so it hides that's... in there. So you don't even see it from the see, outside. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're gonna have, you know, and, and all the things of uh, of a residential building, like a, and a you get the fitness facility. We're usually in a hotel; those are yeah. those are lacking, right? But you know, when I look at pictures like this, uh, I live with my yeah. my family two minutes down the street. Yeah, uh, I haven't worked with international talent like this before, yeah. and being in rooms with these guys, it it's inspiring. They're brilliant. They're yeah. designing the future. Like we don't even know. It's their minds yeah. that are creating what we're going to enjoy later yeah. on. And I think when you're partnering with the biggest investment of your life, and when you love the city like we do, world class architects, artists, like coming to our city, promoting it yeah. with buildings like this, I'm just really excited that we're at that level now, and I and I really think we're we're longing for it. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting one. That's like this is exactly as you said. It's going to change the skyline. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be there to stay. And for those who are looking to invest. This is one of those buildings, again, you want to invest in because there isn't any comparable to it. And by the time this comes out, I don't know, unless something else comes up as a hotel or residence, you're going to be the newest one. The last one is going to be at least six, seven years old at that time. Mm -hmm. um, well, Graham, that's amazing. So for our viewers, if anyone's looking for pricing, any other information, floor plans, or any other source of information about the project, feel free to reach out. Uh, my Instagram handle is going to be down below. You can DM me there or just send us a message. It will get you guys all the pricing and information you need with the brochure. And uh, you guys have a nice cell center downtown too. So 
Beautiful sales. Center. Yeah. Uh, right in the corner, Adelaide and Duncan. Yeah. Brick and what mortar, is, two yeah. stories. It's a beautiful two story model. That you yeah. Can look up and see beautiful. into the restaurant uh, yeah. from the second floor. So we wanted people to be able to come down, experience it. We'll have beautiful art always rotating through there. Yeah. It'll be a really nice experience yeah. for the so city. I highly recommend if anyone's uh, interested to book with us to come down to the cell center and take a look at it. Graham, anything else we should know about? I, you know, this is this is definitely my my focus. This has been a passion project for all, and I'm just happy to see it come to market and talk to people like you about it. It's you know? exciting. Yeah. Educate people. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And um, guys, any questions, feel free to reach out to us and make sure to watch our last episode of NK Real Talk that was with uh, Anton about Airbnb and Airbnb challenges. But with that being said, thank you for watching and have a great day.